Welcome back, everyone, to another deep dive. Yeah. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at an interesting token called MUW. Okay. It's a Solana-based meme coin, and we're calling it Cat in a Dog's World. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's kind of their branding. Yeah. You so. see a lot of dog coins like the Doge and the Shiba Inu and Floki. Of course. So this one's interesting because it's a cat. Right. And so we're going to be diving deep into this with information that we've gleaned from four different YouTube channels. Mm. Uh, we've got Jacob Cryptobury. Mm -hmm. We've got the Trading Parrot. Yeah. We've got Gerhard Bitcoin Strategy. Mm. And then we have Altcoin Daily. Wow. That's a lot of sources. It is a lot of sources. Yeah. And... Uh, so we're going to be looking at, you know, is this just another meme coin or is it something special? Yeah, that's the big question, right? Yeah. Like with all these meme coins, is it going to, you know, disappear in two weeks or is it something that's actually going to yeah. have some staying power? Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, this is kind of a new concept, I think, um, mm -hmm. you know, just looking at it on the surface like a cat in a dog's world. Right. You know, right. Um, but Altcoin Daily brought up an interesting point that they want to be more than just a meme coin. Oh, wow. They want to be like this global entertainment and retail brand. Ambitious. Yeah. And they've partnered with Locus Animation Studios to make a 3D animated series. A series, huh? Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, that's pretty interesting to me. Yeah, it sounds like they're playing the long game here, not just right. trying to pump and dump. Exactly. And, you know, one of the things that could be, you know, pointing to them having some staying power is that they are on the Solana blockchain. Oh, okay. Yeah, Solana's popular. Yeah, Solana's popular. For a reason. It's fast. It's scalable. And uh, Gerhard from Bitcoin Strategy was talking about how a lot of Solana meme coins have done really well. Interesting. However, he does bring up a good point that Solana hasn't been doing that great compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum. Yeah, that's true. So that's something to consider. Mm -hmm. Did you know the price of Solana is going to affect the price of MUW? Exactly. You've got to look at the bigger picture, the yeah. whole ecosystem. So. We should probably talk about the price of MUW right now. Oh, yeah. How's it been doing? Well, it's had some pretty impressive rallies. Really? Uh, Gerhard mentioned that it nearly doubled in a day. Wow. At one point. In a day? Yeah. And Jacob Cryptobury said that over the last 30 days, it went up like 2x. Okay. So it's been moving. Yeah, it's been moving. And there's even some analysts who are saying 3 to 5x growth is possible. Wow. And Jacob Cryptobury even said that by the end of the bull run, it could reach a two to three billion dollar market cap. Okay, so that's, that's huge. That's serious money. Yeah. So what would it take to get there? I mean, there, that's a big jump. It is a big jump. I mean, to break through that billion dollar market cap right. is a big achievement. Yeah, that puts it up there with like the Doge and Shiba Inu. I right. mean, that's the big leagues. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty incredible to think about. It is. And uh, Jacob Cryptoberry did bring up that breaking through that billion dollar market cap would be a major milestone. Yeah. For sure. And, um, you know, one of the things that's probably helping it along is the fact that it's now listed on major exchanges like Bitstamp and Drift. Oh, OK. Yeah, that'll give it more visibility. Yeah. Jacob Cryptoberry said that this has really helped it become more accessible. Right. More people can buy it now. Right. More people can buy it. Easier to trade it. Yeah. That's got to be good for the price. So that's good for the price. But let's talk about the tokenomics. OK. Yeah. How does that all work? Well, uh, on the surface, it seems pretty straightforward. They burned 90% of the tokens and then airdropped the remaining 10% to the community. Okay. So it's a pretty simple structure. Yeah. But I'm guessing there's more to it. Well, yeah, Gerhard Bitcoin strategy, he decided to dig into the on-chain data. Uh-oh. And he found some interesting stuff. Like what? Well, he pointed out that the recent price surge wasn't really driven by new investors. Oh, interesting. But it was actually driven by large holders, or as they call them in the crypto world, Whales. Whales. Okay. Yeah. So big players are manipulating the market. Well, it seems like they're the ones pushing the price up. Right. So it's not organic growth. Ah, right. That's a little concerning. It is a little bit concerning because that means that the price could be really volatile. Yeah. If the whales decide to sell, right. it could all come crashing down. Exactly. Make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com, that's Brian with an I, and get your free affiliate guide titled 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words of life-changing information. Simply submit your name and email and click the verification link sent to your email address. The link for this is in Brian's YouTube bio. I mean, it does make you wonder though, right? Like, are these whales just going to pump it and dump it? Yeah. You know, or is there more to it huh. than just that? Is there something else going on here that what makes that? it worth looking into? Yeah, exactly. Well, Jacob Cryptobury was talking about how the community sentiment is like, 
96% positive. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's really good. That's pretty high. Yeah. And he even said that at the Token 2049 exhibition in Singapore, like people were really excited about it. Okay. So there's definitely some buzz around this. Yeah. There's some buzz. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's not just the whales that are interested. Right. Right. Now, speaking of interesting stuff. Yeah. The trading parrot. Okay. He did some technical analysis. Oh, he's good at that. Yeah. And he saw an ascending wedge pattern. Ah. Uh. Yeah. He thinks this could be bearish. Oh, so that's not good. Well, it means that there could be a price correction coming. Okay. So it might go down. It might. Yeah. Before it goes up again. But, you know, technical analysis, it's not a crystal ball. Right. It's just one tool. It's just one indicator. Yeah. You got to look at the whole picture. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, should we be worried about this bearish pattern? I don't think so. I mean, it, like you said, there's a lot of positive sentiment. Right. And they've got this big plan to build yeah. this whole brand. So I think there's still potential upside here. Yeah, for sure. But there's always risk. Right. With crypto, especially with meme coins. Especially with meme coins. So how do we manage that risk? Well, one thing you can do is hedge against Solana. Okay. That's what Gerhard was talking about. So like if Solana goes down, then right. we're protected. Exactly. You want to kind of offset your losses. Right if the blockchain itself takes a hit. Okay, that makes sense. So, yeah, that's one strategy. Now back to the whole entertainment brand thing. Yeah, the animated series. I mean, what do you think about that? I think it's really interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's a bold move for sure. Yeah. But, I mean, think about it like Pokemon or Hello Kitty. Right. They started as characters. Oh, right. And then they became this whole... Empire. Yeah, <laughs> empire. Yeah. So maybe MEW could do the same thing. Right. I mean, that would be huge for the token. Yeah, I mean, that's thinking outside the box for a meme coin. Yeah, for sure. Most meme coins don't even have a website, let alone an animated series. That's true. So, I mean, they're really trying to do something different here. Yeah, it seems like it. And speaking of different. Yeah. What about Solana itself? Right. We haven't really talked about that. Yeah, like what are the benefits and drawbacks? Well, the benefits are pretty I mean, it's fast. Right. It's cheap. Scalable. Scalable. So it's great for like decentralized exchanges and meme coins. Right. But the problem is that it's had some issues. Yeah. Like outages and security concerns. Right. So reliability could be an issue. Yeah, exactly. So is it worth the risk? I mean, that's up to each individual investor to decide. Right. You got to weigh the pros and cons. Yeah. And make an informed decision. So... I mean, we've covered a lot here. Yeah, we have. We've talked about MUW's brand building strategy, mm. the technical analysis, right. the risk management, mm -hmm. even the Solana blockchain itself. And the community sentiment. And the community sentiment. That's important. Yeah. So what does it all mean? Well, I think the big question is, is MUW a good investment or not? And I don't think there's an easy answer to that. Right. Make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I and get your free affiliate guide titled 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words of life-changing information. Simply submit your name and email and click the verification link sent to your email address. The link for this is in Brian's YouTube bio. It's tough to say for sure, right? I right. mean, there are a lot of factors to consider. Exactly. And, you know, one thing we didn't really talk about is MUW's accessibility. Like, how easy is it to actually buy this token? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Like, it's listed on a bunch of different exchanges, right? Right. It's on both centralized and decentralized exchanges. So what's the significance of that? Well, it basically means there are more ways for people to get their hands on MEW. Okay. So centralized exchanges like Bitstamp and Drift, right. those are really user-friendly, yeah. especially for beginners. Right. But then you've got decentralized exchanges, which give you more control and privacy. So it's kind of like covering all the bases. Exactly. They're making it accessible to a wider range of investors. Okay. That makes sense. So, yeah, it's a good sign. So if somebody's listening to this yeah. and they're like... Okay, I'm interested in this MUW thing. Uh -huh. Where should they go to learn more? Well, the first place I would always recommend is the project's website. Okay. They'll have all the latest information there, you know, about the team, the roadmap, the technology. Hmm. And you should definitely check out their white paper, too. Okay. It'll give you a deeper dive into their vision. Right. And how they plan to achieve it. So kind of like what we're doing here. Exactly. On a more technical level. Right. More in depth. And don't forget about the community. Oh, yeah. The community is huge. Yeah. Like go on social media, check out the forums. Telegram groups, all that stuff. Yeah. Get a feel for the sentiment. Exactly. See what people are saying. That's good advice. Yeah. I think we've done a pretty good job of demystifying MEW today. Yeah. I think so. And the world of meme coins in general. It's a crazy world out there. It is.
Make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com, that's Brian with an I, and get your free affiliate guide titled 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words of life-changing information. Simply submit your name and email and click the verification link sent to your email address. The link for this is in Brian's YouTube bio. But it's exciting. It is. So as we wrap up this deep dive, yeah, I want to leave our listeners with this thought. Okay. We've given you a lot of information. We have. But ultimately, the decision of whether or not to invest in MUW is up to you. Right. Do your own research. Absolutely. Weigh the pros and cons. Don't just take our word for it. Exactly. And make an informed decision that aligns with your own investment goals and risk tolerance. Couldn't have said it better myself. It's been a pleasure exploring the world of MUW with you. Likewise. And to all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Keep those brains buzzing. Keep exploring the world of crypto. And we'll catch you on our next deep dive. See you then. Le-